think everyone could really benefit from having a home server or even just a NAS. Storing important files, having a private media server, or hosting your own Docker containers for ad blockers and VPNs. It's also just a fun and easy way to learn more about servers, uh, hosting, and IT in general. But similar to gaming PCs, the price can get really out of hand really fast when buying a home server. But there are a lot of options out there. Buying old, used enterprise equipment is always a good option. But if you're like me, you just like custom building for your own use case. And that usually means paying a slight premium for full modularity. But I went on a mission to try to build a custom DIY home server for less than 300 US dollars. And yes, that does include the storage. This server is the perfect stomping ground for anyone who wants to start building a home server but still wants to have a lot of room for growth over time. Let's talk about it right after this word from the sponsor of this video. So you just built a brand new PC, and of course, you need to install Windows and get it activated. You head to the official site, you check the price, and you see that it's actually crazy expensive. Well, here's a way better and cheaper option, VIP URCD key. They've got Windows 11 Pro for just $22 with my code JSON. Let me show you how it works. Go to their site, find Windows 11 Pro, and add it to your cart. Use the discount code JASON, J-A-S-O-N, at checkout, and the price drops all the way down to $22. That's over 85% off. Once you've paid, you'll get your key instantly. Pop it into Windows activation, and boom, you're good to go. Easy, fast, safe, and absolutely affordable. You already spent a bunch on your new PC, so don't waste extra money on activating it. Check out VIP URCD key. Links are in the description, and their New Year's sale is live right now. Go grab those deals before they're gone. And thanks to VIP or CD key for sponsoring this video. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these prices are going to change depending on when you watch this video and especially what country you're in. So don't feel like you have to use this as a one to one guide. Use it as a jumping off point to build the perfect budget home server for your use case. I'll provide links to everything in the video description as well as some alternatives just in case things sell out. Now before getting into it, I want to let everyone know that this won't be the cheapest way to get a home server. If you just want a small and cheap server that can host some services for you, then a used micro office PC can be had for around 50 bucks shipped to your door. It's going to have all the power you need to get you started. Or alternatively, any old computer you or your family already have lying around would also be just fine. But if you want more power and space for a few hard drives, then you can spend like $100 to $200 to get full-size PCs to act as your server and use that as your starting point. Both of these options are great ways to go about it, so I wanted to make sure that you were aware of their usability. But like I said in the intro, I just like building computers, and the pre-built office PCs come with a lot of limitations, especially in the way of growth. There's often proprietary power supplies, limited disk space, and just a ton of other headaches that can be annoying as you start to want more and more out of your home server. When researching for this video, I wanted to set some ground rules for this build before getting started just to know what to aim for. First, the entire build needs to be around 300 US dollars before tax, and that would include any storage and even any extra cables. Next, the networking needs to be at least 2.5 gig ethernet. There are 10 gig NICs out there that are surprisingly affordable, but I don't feel like most people have access to SFP plus cables or 10 gig switches so 2.5 gig is going to be enough. The power draw of this machine also needs to be reasonable, which means we aren't going to use any power hungry server chips from 2010. This thing is supposed to run 24 seven after all. We're also gonna need some sort of redundancy for our storage, most likely meaning a RAID array. So we're going to require at least two disks to get that array going. It also needs to support virtualization, being able to spin up virtual machines and Docker containers is an absolute must for this home server. And of course, we are going to want some upgradability. Extra SATA slots is a good start, but also some extra PCIe slots and lanes to provide upgrades when needed, but I'll go over that when we get to it. Arguably the most important part of your home server is going to be the CPU. Now this isn't a gaming PC. We don't need access to overclocking or insane single core performance but the more cores, the better to support all the services you'll be running. And the CPU I've picked is this Intel Core i5-8500. This is a mid-range chip that was released in 2018, but it still has a lot of life left in it. 
It has six cores and six threads with a TDP of only 65 watts. It has support for virtualization, all the modern day security check marks, as well as support for QuickSync, which is going to be very important if you intend to run your server to watch movies or TV shows. QuickSync is Intel's hardware-based video encoding and decoding feature that speeds up video processing without the need for a dedicated graphics card. So you'll be able to transcode videos from your server to whatever device you're using very quickly and efficiently. I was able to purchase this CPU from AliExpress for only 35 US dollars, but you can find them on eBay for a little more if you want to go that route. The only downside to this CPU is that it does not support ECC memory which is just a special server style memory that is error checking and is totally crucial in mission critical servers. But this is an entry level home server and I feel like the pros outweigh the cons in this situation. I personally don't run ECC in my home server and I'm doing just fine. The chipset I've chosen for this server is a bit on the older side, so our motherboard is going to have to be slightly used. But there are tons and tons of old motherboards out there, so feel free to grab one that has all the features you need. But I personally picked up this ASRock B365M OEM from AliExpress for only $45. I liked this board over the others because it has a lot of great features for the price. We've got four DIMM slots for easy RAM upgrades in the future, six SATA ports on the board itself so you can have a ton of drives in the future without any add-on cards necessary a PCIe 3 and VME slot as well as a Wi-Fi card slot. We've also got a full-size 16x PCIe slot just in case you ever want to add a graphics card in the future as well as two more PCIe slots for future expansions. Now this CPU does support DDR4 memory but we don't need any super fast clock speeds or anything so just 16 gigs of RAM is going to be enough to get you started. If you eventually find yourself doing tons of virtualization in the future or maxing out your storage on a ZFS pool, feel free to add more for your use case. Oh, and these two sticks cost me $22 on Amazon. Our processor isn't going to be running super hot, so most air coolers would work out no problem. If you have the generic Intel one lying around, feel free to use that one for free. But I picked up this ID Cooling SE903 XT Black on Amazon for only $15. No fancy RGB lights for us which is good cooling for a low price. Now, unfortunately for the case, we really don't have a lot of options. The problem is that most home servers want to have as much room for 3.5 inch hard drives to use as their network attached storage, but most modern cases only have between zero and two slots for hard drives, which technically would be fine for today. But I wanted to find a case that allows more expansion over time. The tried and true is this Cooler Master N400, which is a simple, no-nonsense case that has room for like 11 hard drives out of the box if you try. The case is fairly simple and doesn't have a good way to hide cables or the power supply, but I think that's fine since you kind of want everything out here anyway. Plus, the side panel isn't see-through, so you can just hide your mess. Easy peasy. It's got some room to mount additional 2.5-inch drives on the back as well as two five and a quarter inch bays at the top for future expansions. This case is actually the case I used for my first DIY home server, which is actually featured in the very first video on this channel. Don't watch it, it sucks. But this is always the case I recommend to new home server builders. It will run you about 75 bucks on Amazon, but I got it on Amazon resale for 68. It's kind of expensive for what it is, so feel free to stalk your local Facebook marketplace and see if anyone is throwing out their old PC cases and try to pick one up for a song. But just remember to make sure that it has room for a ton of drives. Okay, time for the power supply. There are tons and tons of lists online for the most efficient power supplies out there, but they all tend to run a little more expensive, so we will just go with what we can afford. The 500 watt Thermaltake White is always available on Amazon for 40 bucks or less. And since we don't have a graphics card in here, there is no way we will even come close to maxing that out. So it's gonna be perfect for our use case. If you live in a place like Germany that has very expensive electricity costs and you intend to run this machine 24 seven, it might actually be worth it to buy a more expensive and highly efficient PSU. So I'll drop a link to a constantly evolving list of very energy efficient power supplies that the community has created down in the video description. We are going to need a small SSD for our boot drive. You can pick a 2.5 inch SSD or an M.2 SSD. Both are fine. We've got space for both, so it doesn't really matter either way. I had this 128 gig NVMe SSD I got from AliExpress for 10 bucks a few months ago, and it will be enough for our boot drive. But again, just pick up any SSD you can find cheap. Don't overthink it. Now hard drive storage is going to be tough. 
as there's no way we can afford new drives at this price range. So realistically, we can just try to find the most reliable seller on eBay and try to find something that fits our budget. I found two of these two terabyte SATA hard drives on eBay for a total of $35. The smart data on them shows that they have a lot of power on hours. So just be aware that these cheap drives will probably break in the next five years. But this is just to get you started. So feel free to buy as much or as little storage as you need. These two drives will allow us to mess around with redundant settings as well as store a ton of Linux ISOs and personal media. When buying your drives, just make sure that they are SATA hard drives and not SAS. SAS is a whole different beast that we aren't getting into for this build, but just know they won't work without making more purchases, so let's just go for SATA for now. The motherboard did come with two SATA cables, but for an extra six bucks, you can pick up these thin octopus style SATA cables that are all bundled together. These are a great way to have less clutter in your server, as well as keeping all your cables together and organized. I absolutely love these things. And I did say earlier that I want 2.5 gig networking, but this motherboard only has gigabit built in. So we are going to need to get an add-in card. This network interface card only cost me $6 on AliExpress, and it easily slides into any 4X PCIe slot to give us fast 2.5 gig networking speeds. And just so you know, having this won't increase your internet speeds. And realistically, I don't think those hard drives are going to saturate this network, but it will be there for more throughput. And if we ever want to add any fast SSD pools in the future, we will be covered. And with that, our server is pretty much built. All we need to do is install an operating system and get it going. There are a lot of options out there for this, but the two I recommend the most is going to be Unraid and TrueNAS Scale. Unraid is a super user-friendly operating system that pretty much walks you through every step of the process and is extremely straightforward but it costs money for the license and that's just not in the budget. So I'm going to go with TrueNAS Scale for this video. It's a Linux based hypervisor that will not only allow us to create a RAID array, but we can also run Docker containers and virtual machines right out of the box. So you can follow the instructions on their wiki to get it installed and start tinkering with it. This is more of a hardware video and not software, but I'll link to a really great RAID owl video where he introduces everything that TrueNAS Scale has to offer. So what I've done so far is I put the two hard drives into a mirror VDEV which means we will get two terabytes of usable data. And if one of the drives fail, we can simply replace it with a new one, rebuild, and save all of our precious data. So that's great. I also installed and set up Plex in a Docker container, so I can watch any movies or TV shows I have ripped from DVDs directly onto my server from any client. And since we have QuickSync, the transcoding is nice and snappy. We can also create an SMB share over the network, so I can access and store any files on the server from my computer so they can have some nice redundancy. You can host Pi-hole ad blocking services and attach it to your router so every device in your home would be ad free. There really is an endless amount of things you can do with this home server. Now about expansions. How can we upgrade this computer in the future? Well the first obvious one would be more hard drives. There are six SATA ports on the motherboard so you can get up to six drives without doing anything. But if you want more than that, you'll need to get an expansion card. This adapter is cheap and adds a bunch of SATA ports where the NVMe slot would normally go, or you can get one that goes into one of the PCIe slots. Both of these would work great. The five and a quarter inch bays can be expanded to add even more hard drives. You also have room to put a graphics card in here if you really wanted to, so you can do some remote gaming from your server, or if you're sharing your Plex server with your whole fraternity and you need more power to transcode a bunch of 4K streams. What if the speed of the spinning hard drives isn't enough? Well, you can get something like this and convert your PCIe slot to two or even four NVMe fast drives. But if you go that route, you're probably gonna to want to upgrade your NIC to 10 gig so you can fully utilize all of that storage speed. These 10 gig NICs are really affordable, but you'll need a 10 gig network switch as well and those can be a little pricey. Oh right, the power draw. With the computer at idle, running our docking containers and the drive spinning, the server sips only 46 watts of power which isn't the best results in the world, but it's certainly better than a lot of those old enterprise equipments that sometimes start around triple those results. And hey, this home server only cost $300, so I'm not complaining. Some really good results, and I personally would have no issues just leaving this thing on 24 seven. So we proved that for 300 bucks, you can build a really nice little home server that can do everything you need and still be upgradable. You don't need to keep a monitor on this guy at all. It just needs a power plug and an ethernet cable and can hang out wherever you need it to and then you can access everything on it remotely from your main computer. 
But if this computer is way too big and you want something compact and ITX sized for your home server, you can check out this video here where I went over everything I used to build a cheap and small home server. Thanks to the channel members for supporting the channel. My name's Jason. Thanks for watching.